the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I want to focus on the second half of this passage from James. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness that God requires. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, receive the meek and the planted word, which is able to save your soul. Now, I realize I'm a pastor, and this is part of my calling as a pastor, but I don't know about you. Do you ever just kind of sit down and just meditate or focus on a passage of Scripture? Now, I have to do that for sermons, and I have to do that for, for Bible studies. But I also do that in just my daily devotion. And sometimes I just grab the Bible off the shelf and just open it up and read a passage and think about it. And this passage, even though I was preparing for a sermon, really struck me about how antithetical it really is to the rest of the message of the world. I can pull out my phone, I can open up the news app, and I can scroll through headlines and headline and article after article, left, right, and center, whose only objective is to make me outraged and mad. Or I can pull up social media, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, TikTok, whatever it might be, and get a steady stream of things that are geared just to make me angry. Because if you're angry, it's proven you will interact with the app longer. If you interact with the app longer, they get to show you more ads. And if they get to show you more ads, they make more money. And so the algorithms that feed you what you see on your social media is designed to make you mad. Or I can turn on any 24-hour news station and see story after story after story just designed to make me outraged and upset over the other side, left, right, or center. Our world is geared to make us quick to speak, slow to hear, and just angry at everybody. It's not just that. I mean, there's, there's podcasts. There's podcasts that report to be Christian that will produce scripture after scripture after scripture. And yet, if you hear it, you realize that the hosts lack the spirit. And so they use scripture as a weapon to make you angry. To make you want to pick up a stone <coughs> and throw it at somebody because, well, they're just not worthy. James' message to us, the Holy Spirit speaking through James, though, calls Christians to be the exact opposite of how our world is. Don't be deceived. I'm sure, I, I don't know who coined this, but somebody pointed out that we have two ears and only one mouth. So there's a larger importance on hearing than there is speaking. So we should be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Boy, like I said, isn't that just the exact opposite of our world. But we aren't of the world. We're in the world, not of the world. We have been called out of the world. We've been baptized into the life-giving waters of forgiveness. We join in the meal of immortality that gives forgiveness. We have celebrated our Lord and Savior taking our sin upon himself and going to the cross for it, silencing God's anger at what we have done. And we now celebrate the resurrection, the joy, the hope. And that makes us different. It makes us different than the rest of the world. Because we have experienced love. We have experienced forgiveness. And love covers a multitude of sins. Forgiveness means that I can hear first. 
and speak second. Forgiveness means that I know that God's anger about me has been silenced in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so that I can approach my neighbor with the meekness of the implanted word. Meekness doesn't mean weakness. Meekness means not using the strength that has been given to you. We have the word that silences the devil. We have the word that raises the dead to life. And it is the word that can condemn the living to the damned. We shouldn't so flippantly use it to do so, though. But we should first examine ourselves, remove the log from our own eye before we damn our brother or sister for the splinter in theirs. Being a Christian is different because we have hope. We react differently than the rest of the world. Right now, story after news story is happening about uh, reporting on the damages around our state. That happened last night with the storms. And there will be Christians from our state. There will be Christians from our nation. There will be Christians from around the world that will respond to neighbors in need. Neighbors that they disagree with politically or culturally but still their neighbors. Why? Because that is a person in need, and God tells me, who is my neighbor? The one in need. And I can look over those differences because I know in Christ we have more in common than what separates us. That in Christ we are one people. And we can bring a hope to the world. I mean, that, that's, that's the difference between Christians and the rest of the world. We can bring a hope to the world. How can we be slow to speak and quick to hear and slow to anger? Because we have hope. We know of something that is better. Right now, our, our, our community is, is wrestling with a horrific news story. And, there, and there's going to be a memorial service at, at 3 o'clock at the Performing Arts Center for the Candy family. And we're trying to wrap our heads around something that is unexplainable. And at the heart of this, there is that poor 10-year-old boy who's going to need a lifetime of therapy. And we are going to come alongside him for the rest of his life as Christians and point to a hope point to something better than what he witnessed that horrible, horrible morning. We're going to be able to point him to life and salvation, to care and love. That's the marks of a Christian. All of James's letter is about the marks of of a Christian. You just read it all. That famous line that he has, you show me your faith, I'll show you my works. In other words, our faith produces good works. We love our neighbor through our faith. And so we don't just tell him to be warm or to be fed, but we actually do the things to make our neighbor warm, to make our neighbor fed. The world doesn't like that. The world wants you angry. The world wants you upset. The world wants you without hope. The world wants you to be bitter. It wants you to focus on the craziness that is happening across the world. The fighting, the violence, the sins of the world writ large. And it wants you to sit there. It it wants to tell you that's truth, that's reality, because these things happen, there is no God. But God's word speaks different. And when we live that word, when we are people of hope, when we are quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, 
when we put away filthiness and rampant wickedness and we receive with meekness the implanted word that saves our souls, we become living testaments to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, living witnesses that there is something better than the bitterness and the anger and the hopelessness. And I cannot stress enough how important that message is right now, especially for younger generations. I cannot express enough how hopeless they feel. And it's directly correlated that they are the least religious of all generations. And when you live as a living witness to love, to hope, to forgiveness, those are what they desire. Those things is what they seek. When you live as Christ to them, you are making an impact you cannot even begin to comprehend. You are planting and you are watering a seed that we pray to God will grow. That their souls too might be saved as well. Now I wish we could do this perfectly. I'll be your pastor. As your pastor, I will be the first to confess. Oftentimes, I can be slow to hear, quick to speak, quick to anger, especially if I'm on the highway. <laughs> but in Christ, there is forgiveness. May we be living embodiments of it. In his name, amen.